the 1970 Oldsmobile Hardtop by Johan. Coming up next on Monster Hobby's Model Car Garage. Hello once again model car builders. Are you ready for another amazing unboxing video? Well, I'm bringing out some more oldie moldy goldies from the collection. Actually, this is one that my friend John is loaning me today. So we get to see the 1970 Oldsmobile Cutlass from Johan. And I've built many of these kits. And in fact, today I'm wearing my old BC British Columbia Oldsmobile Club jacket that I got back in the 1990s when I was in the Oldsmobile Club with my 1972 Cutlass. And I love this kit because it's the closest thing I can get to a 72 Cutlass. Well, of course, the Ravel kit came out, but prior to that, and as a hardtop. So I've got some nice little conversions and I'm actually gonna take you on a little tour of my own car today so we can see some cool stuff. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And don't forget to shop with us at www.monster-hobbies.ca where you can see all our great model kits. So without further ado, fans, uh, let's go down and check out this amazing model kit. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1970 where we get to see our amazing Oldsmobile Hardtop 442. This is, of course, one of the Johan USA Oldies kits, which is also pretty cool. You can build this stock also custom <laughs> in 125th scale, a nice, amazing kit. And this is a photograph of a real Oldsmobile, which is kind of amazing because in this time period, they were using, of course, the illustrated box arts. One thing I did notice on this, though, is as you turn the box up, there is a little bit of a mistake here. The stock version is showing a 1969 with the taillights going up here. But fortunately enough, this is a 1970, so that's always good. This is a slightly later kit. came out in the 90s from Seville Enterprises because, of course, you can see the barcode in here. The custom model is pretty cool. You get this custom roll pan as well as one in the back. I've built this kit many times in the past. This one again is on loan from my friend John. Uh, there is also a rolled pan, so we can take a look at some of the different versions of this that I made. It's got red line tires, the stock V8 engine in there. Pretty cool. Turn it over, of course, the sides are the same. And then on this, we are treated to more available USA oldies. So here we've got our 62 Dodge Dart convertible, our 70 Tornado hardtop, which I do have one of these as well. The 62 Plymouth Fury convertible, I've built this one. And our 60 Plymouth satellite wagon. This one shows the stock version, but I have reviewed the police one from 1960, as we'll see. Another kit loaned by John. So, again, box art, same as the rest. So let's just pull the lid on this baby and see what's inside. Now, Johan, in the Seville days, had some pretty weird colors that they molded their models in. Now, unfortunately, this one suffers from orange plastic, so we can't be uh, too sad about that. Although, um, I have seen, or I have had ones where it was molded in white. So, like I said, it was really subjective for uh, Johan under Seville. You can see all the components are all squished together in here. So basically how these things were packed back in the day. You can see you've got your uh, your body. Johan had nice fit with, between their hoods and everything. There's a bit here to remove. We'll take a look at that in a bit. You've got your interior bucket. And your undercarriage, nice and simple. And then we've got our parts in here, our engine and everything. This one is quite detailed for uh, Johan. Quite a lot of nice ways to build it. You get this big hood scoop here, which must have been from one of the previous drag race options or something like that. Our instructions. There's our chrome, and this would be the uh, shrink wrap that the box was wrapped in originally. 
So someone's got it in here protecting the chrome. And then we've got our glass components. There's our rear taillights for the stock and custom. As well as our glass. It comes with the kit. Then we've got our Johan tires in here. Where are we here? There we go. And a steering wheel. So I'm just going to clear all this out of the way and then we can look at our instructions. Here's our Oldsmobile instruction sheet for our 1970 Olds Hardtop 442 USA Oldies by Johan. And as you can see, these are simple instructions. We'll just zoom back here. These, of course, are the one-page front and back menu style, like you'd get at a restaurant. <laughs> Very simple, but as you can see, there is a lot going on with this engine block. And that was the interesting thing about Johan kits. Like in our 1960 Plymouth Police Emergency Wagon that I reviewed a long time ago here, the engine was very simplistic, left and right hand side with the transmission stuck on it and intake manifold and cylinder heads and all that stuff as one piece and a couple of pieces later it all popped together. But if I just zoom in here on the engine, better clarity, you can see that the engine block is one block, sort of like the Ravel style where you had the cylinder heads in the top. And like what was done on the 1990s AMT offerings, then you've got the intake manifold as a separate piece going on, a carburetor, an air cleaner, two cylinder heads, your valve covers, left and right of course, your exhaust manifolds, two-piece manual transmission gluing onto the proper bell housing with the starter, you got separate oil pan, the fan belt alternator, power steering pump, the fan the oil filler tube, which glues in the front, typical Oldsmobile distributor at the back. And then the oil filter going on the side. Really nice work. Of course, the Oldsmobile engines are run in the opposite direction from all the other GM blocks. Because the starter is on this side and not this side. And again, very nice work. This is a highly detailed engine, which with something as simple as engine wiring going off the distributor you can really make this thing look nice and what i like about this kit is the 70 71 and 72 oldsmobile hardtops were all the same body style the only thing that really changed was the grills and the side marker lights and things like that although actually i don't think the marker lights changed but the front and rear grill and tail lights those changed for sure uh 70 had the the uh separator bar for your grill that went up with the hood but that became dangerous so in 71 and 72 they removed that from the hood and mounted it into a plastic insert in the front grill anyway it's just uh, some history since i own one i still own my 72 i love it okay there's our chassis pan popping in and it's got these four axle location pins in here which, if you wanted to, you could raise these by drilling a hole in the bottom. Uh, can't really lower it any further. We've got our wheel covers, which unfortunately are not this style. Or maybe that's fortunate, I don't know. Sort of like the rally wheels for olds. We've got our tires there, our wheel backs, our metal axle going in here. Or it could be a plastic. The battery, which actually mounts onto a proper looking battery uh, position. And our assembled engine drop-in. And very simply here we have our rear body assembly. And this is our first of the custom pieces. We have our rear rolled pan as well as our taillights popping in the back. It's got the uh, upper taillights and then a long piece connecting in between. Which would look nice if you lighted this actually. Uh, or lit it, I guess. And then here we have our taillights going here with the vertical style uh, turn signals. Now, if you do want to make a 70 out of this, you cut the centers out. You have to replace those. You put a bar across there. And then you've got the taillight top and bottom instead. And our rear exhaust trumpets pop through the bumper. This was a special bumper made for 442s. The stock bumper just went straight across. And your uh, exhaust pipes kind of exited, you know, lower out the side kind of thing. And then here we'll just roll up into our final assembly on our menu. This is a big panel. Maybe I'll just zoom out a little. 
there we go, fit it full frame. So our final assembly, again, there's our rolled pan, a custom one, and it's got these long grill inserts, which if you are building a 7071, um, this is more Cutlass Supreme grill than Cutlass S or that sort of thing, but you can actually cut these a little bit shorter and then glue them in on top of the 70 grills. You'll have to change the front marker lamps, turn signal lamps, because they're long and rectangular. 71, 72 had circular. As we'll see on my car outside, I'll take you on a little tour, tour <laughs> in this video. Okay, there's our hood and our body, our side mirrors, the radiator shroud, which is nice touch, going on the radiator. Um, if you've got some sheet styrene from Evergreen, there is a panel that's supposed to go between the front bumper and come out and uh, be, uh, you know, touch the radiator wall or the support. Pardon me. And you will have to make that if you want this to be accurate. Anyway, there's uh, the glass going in, the rear view mirror, the firewall. There's a separate brake master cylinder. The firewall touches all the way across, unlike the 60 Plymouth Police Emergency Wagon. So again, more highly detailed, especially with the brake master cylinder. You can drill a couple little holes in there and then wire it down into your chassis. The interior, which is a bucket, but does have the bucket seats in there. The steering wheel and instrument panel all going in together. The gear shift plugs up through the bottom, which is nice. There's two interior lock washers. And then our chassis goes together, and there's chassis pins that pop into the back. There's something interesting about this body, which we'll see when we take a look at the plastic bits. But basically, that is your Johan 1970 Oldsmobile instruction sheet. So the first component we want to look at is our body, of course. And you can see that the proportions look quite right, even though this thing is molded in uh, orange. <laughs> there is a section here that we need to remove, which is kind of interesting because it actually has the holes for chassis pin mounts. But anyway, there. okay, now that we're underneath here, you can see there are some raised mold marks and one sunken in here, which you can always fix up with your number 16 hobby blade. There's little uh, bits in here where you'd mount your radiator and front firewalls, or firewall and radiator, pardon me, which uh, of course helps in the location. See the nice tail light or side marker light details in here. 442 emblems, door handles, very nicely done. Across the trunk, you got your 442 emblem in here. Little flat bits to mount your bumper. Again, overall quite nice. There is a little bit of a mold mark in here, however, or a seam line, pardon me. However, there is an interesting part about this. On the cutlasses that had a vinyl top like this, this is actually where that break is on your vinyl. Uh, however, that's basically our body right there. There is a bit of a, a flash along the top bridge of that fender, but overall, very crisp. The next piece in the model is the hood, which of course you can see has some really nice detail to it. The little side hinges are molded in place with little buttons to lock them in. Let's move this up from here. See the nice accurate vents on the hood. And then there's our little tongue for 1970 with the 442 emblem. And, and as you can see, as I was saying, this thing became quite dangerous when the hood was up and you were working on the engine. A lot of people hit their heads on this. So in the following year, Olds cut it off right along the line and they molded it into a front plastic panel on the car. Underneath, you've got that fireproof matting and then a little square cut in here so that you could put a blower in this kit, which I guess was dropped out of the molding process later on. There's a little hood latch detail up in there and everything couple of little mold marks for your number 16 hobby blade to remove but overall very nice now I'll bring the body back in here and in order to get your hood in you just lightly kind of squeeze the sides of these and it'll work its way in but you can see the nice now keep in mind it's raised up because there's that little piece there it says remove but again, you can see how nice and tight Johan has the gap in between the hood and front fenders. 
So again, very remarkable considering how they built this kit back in the day. It's uh, quite amazing, quite a nice tight fit even into our times here. And like I said, this is one of the last kits molded by Seville Enterprises. Actually, I do believe testers carried it along. So uh, anyway, he, he, it's just a testament to how great Johan actually built these things. Next up, we have our interior bucket. And again, this is quite typical of the time this was molded in. And unfortunately, it would have benefited if this was a little more like the AMT style, where they did the bucket in the back and the sides. Pardon me, the MPC one, which later became an AMT one. <laughs> and the seats were molded separately, as well as the console, I believe, is separate in that kit. I have to take a look. It's been an entire year since I actually looked at that video. No, just saying that because it, that car is 69, this one's 70. <laughs> but much like the bucket along the sides, you've got just your basic flat sidewall. And unfortunately, it's not a separate piece, because otherwise you would have got this nice GM door handle. And actually, this is from a 70 or 72 Cutlass. So there you go. Real nice work. Yeah, so there's our bucket seats, which of course was optional for 442s. And uh, it's got the nice padded detail with the buttons on there, which is really cool. The pedals are molded in, and they are the correct correct ones for the manual. You even have the little parking brake pedal in there. It's parking brake, brake, or sorry, parking brake, clutch, brake, and gas. The only downside is there's a couple of buttons here in the back of the seats. I don't know how well you can see those. They're not supposed to be in there. There's some error in the mold process. Underneath, very basic, there is this peg sitting up here which of course has to be filed down in order to make it sit properly in on the chassis and everything. You can see the square in here, that's where your gear shift is going to shove up through the bottom, so you got to get rid of the flash that's inside. But basically, overall, very simplistic, but will look like a proper 442 once all painted and nicely detailed. And finally, on our major components, we have our chassis here. And again, there are some mold marks underneath, which remove them so you can fit your interior in there. You can see the two blades here. This is where your battery is going to mount. You can take a piece of styrene and glue it over top here before you put your battery down, just so it looks more like the proper uh, flat panel that was in there with the battery. Let me just turn this upside down here. You can see the nice engraved detail in. There's your fuel cell, which is quite large for this car. You have your supports in here, your exhaust, all this stuff is molded as one piece, even the front suspension and the sway bar, or anti-sway bar. Your exhaust pipes are going in here. There is, there's supposed to be uh, another piece that goes across here, but of course we have our mounting bits, so they never put that in. That would complete the perimeter frame. You can see all the nice wi uh, wires and details and stampings underneath there. The only thing I don't like about these is, of course, trying to paint your exhaust pipes. They're not round. They're actually like a big, long rectangle coming out this way that's rounded over at the top. So when you're trying to paint down in here, you know, you need a deep brush and that sort of thing. So, but overall, very nicely done. For a simplistic quick build, there's the holes in here, which of course have those blanks for your axles to go through. Uh, but overall, very nicely done. The main meat and potatoes of the kit, of course, is that amazing engine block. So let's take a look at the other plastic components. Now there's two orange parts trees in this kit. So what I wanted to show first was, of course, the one with the engine block. And then we can take a look at the other components in a minute here. So like I was saying, this engine block is really highly detailed and looks like some of the 1990s AMT kits. Sort of like the uh, 67 Chevy and uh, that kind of stuff, right? So you've got this engine block. Oh, Ravel also did this style back in the day on their 57 Chevy, the one that's really bad to put together. 
55, 56, 57 Chevys had this style. However, it does look really nice because you've got all your little components inside there. The holes for your cylinders. Really nice stuff. Like, just take a look at how great that is. You know, highly detailed. Look at even here, they've got the valves in there on the top of the cylinder heads. Like, just amazing stuff. There's the coil. There's our front water cover, or water pump cover. There's our power steering pump, and it even has the mounting bracket on there. There's our uh, pulleys. This one got cracked here. I don't know if John knows that. <laughs> our exhaust manifolds. There's our oil pan, and Seville had some problems with flash back in the day. There's our rolled pans for our bumpers. They're pretty cool, kind of futuristic style. The big plastic axles. Um, there's our transmission, left and right, with that nice bell housing. That's just beautiful work. The air cleaner, which does look like a proper Oldsmobile air cleaner, which you can see on my car when I take us on the tour. And there's the, the six-bladed fan. I mean, this thing is just perfect. Just like the real thing, only smaller. So here's our second orange parts tree and our final orange parts tree. And here we have our wheel backs, the retainers for the interior. We've got this hood scoop for our dragster, which unfortunately there's that's the only dragster bit to this kit. There's our firewall, and that's got our heater in there. And then here's where our master cylinder would go, which is right here. This is very nicely done once you get it out of the flash. There's our AC Delco battery. The little fan shroud, so you don't uh, cut your fingers in the fan if you're trying to do some engine work. There's our radiator support and our radiator in, in there. There's those wheel bits for your axle. And then we've got our valve covers. And then the steering wheel, which is separate uh, for whatever reason. So what I want to show you is this dashboard. And this thing is really accurate. I'll just bring it up to the camera and just show you the detail on this thing. So you got like all your instruments and your air conditioner and everything. But you may be wondering how accurate this thing really is to a 1970. Well, let's just take a look at something. So this is how accurate the Oldsmobile model kit from Johan is. This is my repair manual for 1972. And like I said, the 70, 71, and 72s all had very similar components. This is our dashboard, how it really looks in the car. The left-hand outlet, the right-hand outlet, the glove box, the pad assembly, the center outlet, the clock cluster, your speedometer cluster, your fuel gauge cluster, headlamp switch, washer, wiper switch, cruise control, uh, that would be optional, your heater or AC control, your lower AC outlet if you have air conditioning, radio, the under valance here, your ashtray, and your lower AC outlet. So as you can see with our plastic components, this thing is, is dead accurate on the model. So isn't that amazing? Just like you can see, this thing is very accurate to the 1970, 71, and 72 Oldsmobiles. So amazing work again by Joe Han. And there's something also really cool about this steering wheel. So let's just take a look at that. So this little picture here shows the identification of the wheel discs, wheels, and steering wheels that were available in 1972, actually. But they are, of course, from 1970. So what we see here is the custom sport steering wheel for the F85, which would, of course, also be the 442. And there's our Johan example. Pardon my fingers. But you can see, well, let's put it this way. There we go. So you can see that this, of course, is accurate to this sport steering wheel. And, spoiler alert, <laughs> there's our wheels on the chrome part tree, which, of course, match our P05 Superstock number one wheels from the book. But unfortunately, on the box art, it shows the Superstock number twos, N66, which sadly are not included in the kit, but would also look really nice. These ones are, of course, in the 69 Oldsmobile by AMT, so if you want to do a little kit bashing, you can. And if you really want to go 
stock if you can find it. The 1975 Oldsmobile by Joe Han has the PO1 14s inside the kit as promotional wheels. So you could also adapt those into this kit. So there you go. Just like I said, this thing is very accurate to the Oldsmobile it is representing. And uh, what else can I say except let's check out the chrome. Now it's time to review my favorite part of all the model kits, which of course is a nice shiny chrome. So here we have our chrome parts tree, which is pretty sparse, but again, the Cutlasses and the GMs and Fords and that of the 70s didn't have as much chrome as like the 50s, but there still was quite a lot to make the car look really nice. So here what we have is our front bumper with the square turn signal lamps, which of course is 1970. The gap in here, which matches in with the hood on that piece. And like I said, in 71 and 2, that little 442 piece of the hood was molded in place. There's our super stock one wheels, as well as the gear shift lever, which pops up from underneath. Our rear bumper, accurate for 1970, even has 1970 as a license plate. So you can paint this and uh, have the 1970 up there just like they would in a museum, or scrape them off carefully with your number 16 hobby blade and put an actual, like, Illinois license plate or whatever state you want to be from. Alberta would be nice too, British Columbia. There's our inserts for the custom chrome grill. Actually, the rolled pan, what am I talking about? <laughs> But you can cut these down and fit them in here, and that would give you a Cutlass Supreme look for your 72 Olds. There's our alternator, carburetor, these little things. Mirrors, side, side view mirrors. Rear view mirror is there. Starter, uh, the oil filter, I believe. And then our filler pipe here. And then they also give you some chrome valve covers, so if you don't want the stock style, there you go. On the back, pretty flat. There's a couple of mold marks there, which could be easily sanded down. You won't see the back of this anyway, so that'll remove the chrome. You could glue it in nicely into your rolled pans. There are some mold marks and things here, which you can sand out, which I would recommend. And then paint the back of this all gloss black or flat black. Same with the back of the bumper. More, more importantly, up along this edge toward the back because that'll hide it from being viewed from up and underneath. But as you can see, the front end is quite nice. Nice chrome detail on there. Headlights molded in place, just like our 60 Plymouth police car. A lot of Johans had these molded in place. Didn't really give you a clear, uh, clear lens in there. These you need to paint black because on the real car, that's wide open. You could, if you were very careful, you could actually drum all the backs of those off, so they will be wide open. But again, very nicely done on the chrome parts tree, very accurate to a 70 Oldsmobile. Next up, we have our clear components, which of course include the windshield and rear glass. No side windows. This, of course, is a promo style and the 60s style, so you have these long runners connecting the glass. You can actually cut these off for more accuracy. And then here we have our rear tail lamps. So the stock version, as well as the custom, the elongated tail lights, which would look nice with some LEDs in behind there if you're into wiring your models. Of course, our glass is pretty clear. There are some big mold marks back here. Uh, what I would just recommend is running sandpaper across. You're not going to see this portion anyway. Just to flatten these big bumps out so they don't interfere with interior fit or anything like that. Unfortunately, there are some little scratches in the window here. The problem with back in the 60s is they never bagged the clear plastic parts. So any bits like this could roll across and scratch it. You know, what do you expect from the old days? <laughs> Anyway, there's our rear tail lamps. There is a nice little grill pattern molded in on the custom ones. And of course we've got 442 stamped in here so you know which car it goes to in the future. There, there are little mold marks in between here. Fortunately on the back so that won't interfere with their fit on the bumper. 
Um, you can scrape them out of there. I don't think it really matters either way. But that's basically our clear components. Here we have our tires that come with the kit. And as you can see, these are very generic, basic Johan style tires. So they don't say Firestone, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, Moto Master from Canadian Tire, or anything like that. These are just plain. Unfortunately, these ones do not have the pre-painted red line tires on them. However, they do have the little raised ridge. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, so right along there, where you'll have to very carefully paint on the red yourself. There is a bit of flash in here and on the edge. And there are some, like, sink depression marks in on the rubber. So I don't know if you want to use these tires or try to replace them with some more modern AMT ones or what. Uh, however, you will have to put this in your drill press thing and use your sandpaper to remove the ridge on here. But once you do, you should be able to strike a bit of sandpaper across these ridges just to make them pop out a little bit better. And of course, use your number 11 hobby blade and kind of roll it around to cut the cut that flash out of there so that your wheels will be able to sit down into the tires. Normally in this part of our video I would show you the decal sheet for this model kit. However, there is none. Johan never made one for this kit. So what we have is just a basic 442 that you would paint monocolor, of course. However, what I want to point out was Oldsmobile did have two different types of striping packages. One of them was stripes that went on the hood, and the other one was a stripe package whoops, that went along here, up along the wheel arch, across here, and then up there and off. Usually they didn't have the stripes with that package, but there is one thing I want to note with the Oldsmobile, which makes it different from the Chevy Chevelle. Oldsmobile only had the stripes on the hood. It never had them on the back trunk lid. And if you ever see an Oldsmobile in a magazine or something where they show them on the back trunk lid, that's inaccurate. The only car that was different in that regard was the Hearst Olds, the Hearst 442s, which had different things going on. But anyway, a simple way to mask this is just to take some masking tape along the edges of the ridges on these hood bulges and then paint that a different color, like white, black, red, whatever. Or if you're very fortunate, you can find somebody on the internet that makes decals for this, or you can use some old Fred Caddy ones, which I have, which actually I can show you those. Now, back in the day when I was in the Oldsmobile Club, I was trying to make, of course, as many Oldsmobile model kits as I can. And these ones here are the Fred Caddy de decal sheet that of course, when Fred Caddy was still making decals, these things were all over the place. Unfortunately, Fred C Caddy, <laughs> of course, put in the trunk lid decals. But anyway, as you can see, there's the ones for the hood that he came up with, black and white. You have W30, W31 for different options for the olds. And then you've got white stripes here. These ones were on the sides, like I was saying, and... I forgot the one went across the trunk lid, but there it is. And then he's got these Cutlass S decals, which you put the silver one down first and then slide that one on the top. There's an Oldsmobile air cleaner with Oldsmobile spelled up. And then the one for the 442 with the 442 block. And then 442 emblems. So again, very nice work by Fred Cady. And I want to show you another one here that I bought. This one here is Fred Cady de decal sheet number 302. And instead of black and white, this one is orange and gold. And this is a beautiful decal sheet. So, of course, these would go on a darker colored car. But again, very nice. And I have one more to show you. Now, this one is really amazing. This is a 1970 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme convertible. So you need a different body, of course. This is the official pace car decal sheet by Fred Cady. And it's got the black lighters here and the red ones there. So you're supposed to... Put the black ones down first and then slide the red ones over top so you've got like a drop shadow of red. It's got official pace car May 30th, 1970 for the Indy 500. The black stripes. Now this one did have the stripes on the trunk lid. There's our Indy logo with the white backdrop you put on there as well. 
and then the air cleaner for the 442 and it's got the Firestone tire uh, labels on there as well as the air cleaner with Oldsmobile written on it and look at all the 442 emblems this is really cool it's just too bad Fred Katie is no longer making these here we have my first attempt at ever building the 1970 Johan Oldsmobile hardtop and this is a very old kit in my collection you can see that I hand painted those red line tires on there this is my first spray paint job using an airbrush and I painted this with the Tamiya metallic blue unfortunately there's a lot of drips and sags and everything in it I was trying to get the mixture right I also built this model before I actually owned a real Oldsmobile, my 1972 Cutlass. So I have made a lot of mistakes in here with car color, including the Chevy engine orange engine block. This is my second 1970 Oldsmobile 442, and this one has those custom rolled pans on it. And to be honest, I did take a lot of custom bits from other kits to make this, like those wheels. They're from an AMT 53 Studebaker, the custom. And the steering wheel is from, I think, a Ravel kit. There's those red taillights that go all the way across the back. The color is Tester's Metallic Purple out of the old square bottles. And this again was an airbrush job, and as you can see, I did improve quite a lot on this one. Next up, we've got another great Oldsmobile for you. Now this car is a different type of custom job, and as you can see, it's been turned into the Rally 350 in as best as I could. The actual hood is a little bit different, but the Fred Katy decals are on here, as I showed in the video. And you can see the red line tires and the Rally 2 wheels. Those come from the AMT kit. The wheels are actually Firestones from a different AMT kit. And the spoiler on the back there is from the AMT Cutlass from 1968. And you can see the nice job on the yellow and everything. This is a spray paint job. And this car was named after my first girlfriend on the license plate there. So this would be about 1998. This is a work in progress duplication model of my actual 1972 Oldsmobile. And as you can see, I've put a lot of work into accurizing this to my real car. I've even added in bare metal foil with some black foil on there for that side molding. And the Fred Katie Cutlass S decals on the front fenders, just like on my real car. And as I rotate this around here, I've also added in the little spot here for our door latch, for unlocking the trunk, I should say. And uh, as you can tell, I was on quite a good path to getting this right. It's even painted in the correct saddle bronze color, which is actually a humbrol brass, which is quite surprising. But that is my car. Just to give you an idea of the amount of alteration that I've done to this model kit, you can see here the original 1970 Johan bumpers and then my 1972 alterations to them. So just with the front bumper, you can see that I've taken the square turn signal lights and replaced them with these round ones, like how the 1970 is supposed to be. A little hard to tell on the flat black. I've also taken the custom grills and cut them down and inserted them into the grill openings because the 72442 didn't have it like this. Then I've altered the front here more along the lines of the 72 bumper that curved upward. I'll have to cut the tongue off the hood somehow and put it in there. And uh, that's where I'm for there. For the rear bumpers here, let me just move these out of the way, move these over. You can see the vertical headlight or tail lights, pardon me, and the 1970 license plate inside here and what I've oh and the rear exhaust pipes going through the bumper and then for mine I've actually cut out the verticals and put in the horizontal bars I'm gonna have to figure out how to put red tail lights in here and I've removed the exhaust pipes and covered them over with this plastic filler and removed the 1970 off the license plate at the bottom so again, this kit is going to be a work in progress over time. 
but you can see that eventually it should be able to be transformed into a 72 cutlass. And as a final exciting feature, you can see that I've changed the front bucket seat into a bench. And how I did this actually was I cut the bottom off the car and cut out the two bucket seats. Then I sanded down the gear shift lever and everything that was in here, the center console. And I filled it all with automotive uh, body filler. And then re-sanded and reshaped it to the proper Oldsmobile shape. So then when you put this back together, you actually get the stock bench seat. And then I've added in the armrests from the AMT kit, just to give it a little extra on the sides there. And when I get done, it should look like it did back in 1992. And that completes our look at the Johan USA Oldies 1972 Oldsmobile Hardtop. Well, I hope you enjoyed that awesome video and great thanks out to my friend John for allowing us to take a look at this great old example of an untouched 1970 Oldsmobile from Johan. I wanted to show these in the video, but all of mine are, you know, half built and whatever. So I'm glad he actually had a fresh one for our great review. So don't forget once again, here I'm going down here so I, the words show up to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I unopen a new model kit, you're the first to see it. Next week, we're going to have another great Oldsmobile kit from Johan, so stay tuned. And visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Support us over on our Patreon page, and check out all our other great YouTube pages and Leave comments on Facebook and all that other cool stuff. And until next time, everyone, happy model building.